his, uh, his uh, leadership and allowing me to be his wingman on some of them. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I want to thank our panelists for speaking to this important issue, digital trade. Uh, I see uh, incredible opportunities and some risk uh, as we try and plot our way forward. Um, the risk, I think, emerges because there's, there's a sense of urgency, at least I, I feel it, uh, for the United States to work with partners and allies to kind of further refine our rules in this area. And as it relates to this area, as with so many other uh, international policies, uh, we need to come up with rules that are, are somewhat flexible, that are, are consistent across international boundaries. So there are a lot of commonalities between uh, the work that I think is going to be required here and, and what we do in other areas. Um, we also need to make sure that we're effective. We've we got to make sure our digital trade rules can, can prevent the bad actors from uh, purloining our, our data and, and uh, you know, uh, preventing uh, us from growing to the extent we otherwise would and, and landing market share since the United States leads in so many of these areas uh, from, from digital platform to digital services and, and, and so forth. Um, and I, I think we can do a, a, a real uh, service to many of our allied uh, countries uh, across the Indo-Pacific in, in particular. I know there's been much conversation about that uh, here today. The administration, I, th I think appropriately, has recognized the importance of the Indo-Pacific, uh, uh, the digital trade pillar within the uh, uh, IPEF uh, by recognizing the importance of this issue. But I, I feel like a more targeted approach is, is necessary. And I know colleagues on both sides of the aisle agree with me with respect to that. Uh, the chairman and I have, have just introduced a resolution, in fact, indicating our belief in the importance of this area. Uh, and, and we hope that continues to gain more support. Um, my, my first question would, would be of Ms. Bliss. We have some recent experience in this area of, of digital trade rulemaking, right, with USMCA. Uh, I'm just looking at a punch list of things that are included there. Um, USMCA prohibits custom duties on digital products, a commitment to non-discrimination, uh, uh, localization requirements, no forced dis disclosure of, of source codes and algorithms, uh, requires parties to establish civil and criminal procedures and penalties for trade secret theft, and recognizes risk-based ba approaches and the need for strength and cooperation between governments on, on cybersecurity. Those are among the uh, things that are called for in USMCA. How is this different as we look at the Indo-Pacific context? What, what just very briefly, what differences will, will be required to cater to the Indo-Pacific countries? Well, first of all, um, I, I want to commend you, as I did Senator Carper, for your leadership introducing your resolution on, on digital trade and working with allies and listing barriers. I think it was very effective and important. Um, but to your point, um, I think that because we're not looking at an FTA negotiation and we're looking at a different kind of initiative um, that doesn't directly offer market access, um, one of the challenges is going to be um, how we convince our some of our countries that may not be like-minded but that are participating in the trade pillar and the digital piece to come on board and high-level standards. So one of the differences I would point to is I think it's going to be very important that we do build in incentives like capacity building um, and uh, hopefully encouraging them to create countries like Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia to create environments that will attract foreign investment, which we know they desperately want. The other thing I would point out is that I think another difference is that we think it's really important to include some new provisions that go beyond what was done in USMCA and US Japan. Um, and I've outlined that to the committee uh, previously, but, uh, but just for example, I think we absolutely need to include principles on AI. I think that's very important. I think we also need to include something on digital worker upskilling. I think that's important for U.S. workers as well as it is for IPEF countries. Mm. I think we need to include something on SME digital tools um, and something on greater inclusivity, um, just to name a few. 
Um, and I also want to highlight for the discussion, particularly some of the remarks that Mr. Faith had uh, made, that cybersecurity, I think, is a very important area that we need to build on as well. Thank you for that. Um, there's just so much here. It is a, a very broad topic, and, and uh, good subcommittee hearings typically are based on broad topics. They give us a, an opportunity to move into a number of areas. So, um, one of the areas that I, I know my constituents are interested in are, are the national security implications of, of digital trade and, and maybe not getting the rules right as, as we try and address uh, certain challenges. So, um, I'd like to uh, ask. Mr. Faith, some questions in this area. Um, Mr. Faith, I, specifically, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the, the challenges some of my colleagues have, have brought up uh, with, with China. Um, China is it's one of the most digitally restrictive economies in the world, but it's also one of the largest consumer markets in the world. And in your testimony, you, you covered many examples that show how the Chinese Communist Party is ex accumulating and exploiting data and pushing policies that allow them to selfishly advance their own authoritarian interests. So Mr. Faith, I'll just ask you an open-ended question here. What's at stake if we sit back and, and we let China dictate standards in digital trade? What's at stake if the United States fails to boldly um, you know, solidify some international standards, especially as we look at the uh, Asia Pacific area. Well, thanks, Senator. As with many things, China, um, taking seriously the words of the Chinese Communist Party leadership and of Xi Jinping uh, can be instructive on this issue. Uh, what he has said is at stake in the contest over data and over which countries and political systems are best able to recognize the significance of data and exploit data, uh, he has said it's the matter of the upper hand in future world power. Uh, he has been saying this actually for quite a while. Uh, it was 10 years ago that he compared uh, data in our century to oil in the last century uh, as the most important component of economic and therefore national power. And do you agree with his assessment? Yes. Not because it's his, but because it's, uh, there's an insight there. No, and, and, and in fact, I think each of us would be wise not to dismiss his assessment because it happens to come from a Chinese communist leader, right? Yes, yes, yeah. sir. Thank you, Mr. Faith. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, you bet. 